be the sound people. Is that okay now? Mr. Speaker, sir, and the honourable members, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Your Excellency, you have been advised by your lawyers that uh, you are here to respond to specific issues. Yes. In I have my advice. And not to talk generally. I know. Yeah, so rules of relevance will still apply to you as they apply to all members. Mr. Speaker, the motion before this great house alleges that two years ago, since assuming office, I have acquired property and wealth whose estimated value of 5.2 billion shillings, a significant number of properties to which this sum of 5.2 billion is erroneously and maliciously attached, belongs to my late brother, the late Honorable James D. Togachagua, and as demonstrated by his will a copy of which is attached. The fact as follows. Olive Garden, my response. The allegations that I own the Olive Garden Hotel is false. The truth is that Olive, Ho Olive Garden Hotel used to belong to my deceased brother, the late Honorable James Dirito Kachagua, and therefore has never been my property. This is information that most of you may be aware as it is in public domain. Upon his demise, my late brother left a will in which, in his recognition that I can take care of his family, he appointed me as one of the executors of his estate. In the said will, my late brother directed that the hotel should be sold, among other properties and proceeds distributed as per the will. I'm also listed as a beneficiary together with other persons named therein. In accordance with these instructions, the hotel was sold by the ex executors to a third party. Owing to the above, I do not own the hotel and I have never owned it contrary to acquisition in the motion. For the benefit of this August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copies of the following supporting documents. My late brother's will, sale agreement dated 17th May 2023, an official search for Olive Garden Hotel Limited. Mr. Speaker, Vipingo Beach Resort, just as in Olive Garden, above this allegation is also false. Vipingo Beach Resort belongs to the estate of the late James Dirito Kachagua. For the benefit of this house and the general public, I have attached a next to this response copy of the official search for Vipingo Beach Resort Limited, confirming that the hotel is still in the name of my little brother's estate. Queen's Gate Service Apartment. The allegation is also false, as the property belonged to my late brother. Queen's Gate Service Apartments, registered in the name of Ipingo Beach Resort Limited, was sold to Cooperative Bank of Kenya Limited, staff retirement benefits scheme as evidence by the agreement for the dated 4th May 2022 and a transfer dated 5th October 2022, marks Annex RG6. Lad Paso Ruguru Kiamariga 2023 in Madeira East constituency, which have originally constructed a helicopter landing facility. My response is, I do confirm that I own the above reference property, which has approximately 2.5 acres in size, and which have planted nipia grass for my dairy cows. I purchased the land in the year 2023 for 3.5 million from farm proceeds coming from my dairy farm. I have read through the motion and there is no iota of evidence adduced of the impropriety in the way I acquired this small property. Finally, on this matter, I wish to confirm that there is no helicopter landing facility for this particular parcel on the motion. This part is also false. I attach a copy of the agreement for purchase of this property marked Annexia RG7. 40 acres of land purchased in Kakuret within Cabraine in Nyeri County. My response. I confirm that I own a property having bought it in 2015, a time when I was not a state officer. I had not been even been elected as member of parliament 
from the Honorable Jeroga Wainaina, Member of Parliament for Kenny, who is present in his house. Oh, I'm not sure whether he's present. Therefore, this property I purchased 10 years ago, and not two years ago, during my tenure as Deputy President, and as indicated in the motion, the allegation is false. I have read through the motion, and there is no iota of evidence adduced of any impropriety in the way I acquired this property. For the benefit of this August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copy of the agreement for sale and purchase of this property marked as Annexia RG8. Eight acres of land in Meru County. For the record, I wish to confirm that I do not own eight acres of land in Meru. This allegation is false. However, in the spirit of full disclosure, I would like to confirm that I have purchased 29 acres of land in Meru, the land of my mother, which I bought on around 9 February 2024 through a loan granted to me by Solution Circle Limited, which I am a member. This said circle has a charge registered against the title, which it continues to hold as security until I fully repay the loan. For the benefit of the August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copies of the agreement of sale marked RG9 and a letter dated 15 July 2024 from Solution Circle Limited confirming that they finance the purchase of the property marked Annex RG10. Dairy farm in Nyandarwa County. My response is I do not have a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County, therefore this allegation is false. The land in Nyandarwa has no single animal. Companies. The motion alleges there are 22 companies owned by my family members and which have been used to massively load the money and conceal proceeds of crime, corruption and benefit from influence peddling. My response is the mover of the motion has listed the 22 companies associated with me and has alleged that they have been used to massively load the money and conceal proceeds of crime corruption and benefit from influence peddling. I've carefully gone through the motion and I've not seen any evidence to support or prove the allegations therein. It is not clear to me how to respond without having seen any evidence incriminating the companies. I would like to be clear that these companies have not been involved in any illegal activities and I believe that is why the move of the motion has not tabled any evidence of impropriety with respect to the companies. It does appear to me that the mover of the motion was so meticulous to get all the companies associated with me and my family. And I believe that if he also had evidence of illegalities committed by the companies, he would have shared or tabled that for the record. However, it is not possible to get evidence of illegality where there is none. Having said the above, Allow me just to mention a few companies because there are many. Regarding the Gashagua Foundation, this is a foundation I incorporated in 2022, and I clarify that the foundation is a non profit making entity with the sole objective of uplifting the lives of less privileged in society. This foundation, therefore, does not trade. And, honorable members, you are aware that by law, a foundation cannot be used to trade. Since incorporation, the foundation has received a total of 12 million shillings, which has been utilized as per the schedule marked Annex RG11, which is paying school fees for children in Pwani University and other universities across the country. Dokas Regadi Foundation, because she is not here to defend herself, this is a foundation founded by wife, by my wife, Pastor Dokas, incorporated immediately we came into office as a non-profit making entity for the sole purpose of rehabilitation of drug addicts, widows, single mothers, and orphans. A brief write-up of this foundation, together with its achievements, is annexed here with as Annex RG12. It is in public domain that Pastor Dockers have been around the country doing work of rehabilitating drug addicts and helping others who have challenges. There are many other companies that are here but I don't, uh, because it's, this is a house of record, I don't, ha I don't want to bother the members of parliament of going through all of them. I want to probably only talk about Wamunyoro Investments Limited, named after my village in Wamunyoro. 
This company was incorporated 21 years ago before I became deputy president, and it's a company that holds family property. Mr. Speaker, sir, I've been accused of exerting influence on officials in the Ministry of Lands to issue an allotment letter to Amunyoro Investments Limited and using the fraudulently acquired documents in support of a court case. My response, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, I wish to confirm that Wamunyoro Investments Limited has never been issued with any letter of allotment for land in Embakasi. Wamunyoro Investments Limited purchased this land from a third party in the year 2012. The company's ownership of this property has been confirmed through two legal processes. One, a case was filed before the National Land Commission in the year 2016, adjudicated and a determination was made that this property belongs to Amunyoro Investments Limited. That was long before I became the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Again, a matter was filed in High Court case, ELC case number E242 of 2022, which was filed before I became Deputy President. All the documents filed in support of this case were filed in court before I became deputy president, and no documents have been filed by myself in court upon becoming deputy president. This being the case, it is not true that I have used my office as deputy president to manufacture documents filed in this matter. The High Court found that this land legally belongs to Amunyoro Investment Limited and issued the appropriate direction. This matter has since been challenged in the Court of Appeal. I invite any honorable member who may want to be enjoyed in this case to have the liberty to do so. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have been accused in the irregular procurement of mosquito nets at a cost of 3.7 billion. In response to paragraph 45 of ground seven at page 23 and 42, paragraph 78 and ground 11 at page 36, 37 or 42 of the impeachment motion, I wish to respond as follows. It is not true as claimed in paragraph three of the witness affidavit of Andrew Molua that I was involved in the KEMSA 3.7 billion irregular procurement of malaria nets, either directly or through proxy. Further, Shobika Impex Limited was not awarded the subject tender as the acting director of procurement, Dr. Justice Kenoti, by letter 5th, May 2023, formally notified Shobika Impex Limited that its bid was unsuccessful because its tender security was not paginated and the tender was hence non-responsive. That is clear at paragraph four of the witness affidavit of Adru Morwa. He contradicts himself by claiming that on 11 July 2023, I pressured him to surrender the original bid board, yet by the letter dated 5th May 2023, KEMSA had requested for collection of the original bid. Thus, there was no cause to pressure to be exerted on Mr. Mulwa for or any other purpose. I am aware of a foreign company known as Shobika Impex Private Limited, domicile in India, and which appointed Kenya, Crystal Kenya Limited as its local agent in the year 2014, that is eight years before Regadi Gashagwa became the deputy president. To date, Crystal Kenya Limited has complied with the agency terms between itself and Shobika Impex Private Limited, annexed here to and marked as annex RG18 in an appointment agency letter by Shobika Impex Limited in the year 2014. Sometime in 2023, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority advertised tender number GFATM Mall NFM 2022-2023 for supply of long-lasting insecticidal nets using the international open tendering method of procurement on behalf of the Global Fund. The monies for supply of the nets, as per my understanding, was a pure grant from the Global Fund. I am aware that Shobika Impex Limited still participates in doing business with and has not been demanded by the Global Fund to date. I believe being technically qualified to provide and deliver the goods subjects of the tender document, having the financial ability to do so, and without the participation or assistance from Crystal Kenya Limited, 
Shabika Impex Private Limited independently participated and submitted in its bid in response to the subject tender pass one to an invitation by KEMSA. Having not participated in the subject tender, Crystal Kenya Limited did not submit any of the documents in response to the subject tender. Specifically, Crystal Kenya Limited did not submit a bid board or tender security in its name in response to the subject tender. It is therefore not true that Crystal Kenya submitted a fake bid board with an intention to fraudulently acquire public property. It is also not true that with my sons, I use Crystal Kenya to massively louder money, conceal proceeds of crime, engage in corruption, and benefit from influence peddling. Subsequently, via the letter, 5th May 2023, KEMSA notified Shobika Impex Limited that it was not successful because the tender security was not paginated and requested Shobika Impex Private Limited to collect this bid security from the procurement office immediately. Annexed here too and marked annex RG19 is a said letter by KEMSA dated 5th May 2023. However, EACC commenced investigations of the subject tender and on conclusion of the investigation by EACC and the Senate on the subject tender, KEMSA CEO Terry Ramadani, who had been suspended on this issue, was appointed Kenya's Deputy High Commissioner in New Delhi, India by President William Ruto. Thereafter, Crystal Kenya Limited, a Shobika Impex Limited agent in Kenya, followed up in the release of Shobika Impex Private Limited's bid board tender security on behalf of Shobika. And next year to an annex, and marked annex RG20, is an email from Shobika Impex Private Limited email addressed to Crystal Kenya Limited together with a letter of even date confirming that Crystal Kenya Limited had authority to collect their bid board. KEMSA was mandated to immediately release the bid board, tender security, upon determining that Shobika Impex Private Limited was unsuccessful in the subject tender, and that is why they requested that the same be collected from its procurement office. KEMSA did so, as can be seen in its letter, dated 11 July 2023, annexed year two and marked annexure RG21 in the same letter by KEMSA, dated 11 July 2023. Mr. Speaker, noting that Shobika Private, Impex Private Limited was not successful, it did not supply any goods, and it did not receive any public funds in payment thereof with respect to the subject tender. Accordingly, I have not committed any crime under Section 45, 1, 46, 47, A3, and 48, 1 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, and Section 2, 3, 4, and 5, of the Proceeds of Crime Money Laundering Act. Further, I have not breached Section 34 of the Leadership and Integrity Act, for I did not bully any state or public officer with respect to the subject tender. And specifically, no evidence has been tendered to support the allegation at paragraph 78C of ground 11 at page 37 of 42 of the motion, which alleges that I summoned procurement officers in ministries and institutions instructing them to direct procurement of goods and services in a specific manner. I have been accused of unnecessary and expensive renovation of the official residence of the Deputy President in Karen and Mombasa. Mr. Speaker, firstly, I would like to state that funds for the renovation of the official residents were approved and allocated by this Honorable House based on the fact that the premises had been neglected for a very long time when Dr. William Ruto was Deputy President. It cannot be fair that this House would proceed to impeach me because of an action that these Honorable Members have approved by of appropriating monies for their innovations. Mr. Speaker, the contract for the refurbishment of the official residence of the Deputy President Dated 22nd December 2022, was signed by Honorable Katole Metito, the Controller of State House, Office of the President, and Agrobic Investment Limited that was awarded the tender because the Controller of State House at that time was the accounting officer in charge of the Office of the Deputy President. The report of the Auditor General, Mrs. Nancy Gadongo, dated 24th January 2024, 
on the executive office of the president for the year ended 30th June 2023, gave the opinion confirming that due compliance with the Public Finance Management Act 2012, the report is annexed herewith and marks as Annex RG 23. I would also like to add that the deputy as Deputy President, I am not involved in procurement processes of my office, whether directly or indirectly. I would also like to state that I do not know the company Agropreek Investments Limited, which undertook the renovations. I do not know the directors and the company. I did not participate in the tendering or supervising of the same. The motion dated 26 September 2024 alleges that on 29th January 2023, 45 million Kenya shillings was transferred to Vayani Enterprises Limited, which is alleged to be a special purpose vehicle used by me to save on public funds. No evidence whatsoever is contained in the motion showing that the said company is in any way connected to me or that I have any beneficial interest in the said company, which I am neither a director or a shareholder. I categorically, categorically refute the allegation, which is false and unfounded. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to confirm that I'm not a director or a shareholder, directly or indirectly, of the company called Agrobrick Investments Limited, and I do not know its shareholders or its directors. Mr. Speaker, there is an allegation of dubiously acquiring substantial portion of the sum of 100 billion paid to Lusona Events Limited. My response, Mr. Speaker, is just like in the above other matter. I have read the motion and I would like to state that there is no evidence that this company is linked to me. I wish to categorically state that I have no beneficial interest in the said company and neither have, have I affiliated, am I affiliated in any way to the directors and shareholders of the said company. I would also like to state that I'm not a director or a shareholder of the company and do not know its shareholders or its directors. I do not sit in a tethering committee. I am not the accounting officer of the office of the deputy president. I have also not had any complaints against the manner in which the company undertook the work. I am unable to confirm the allegations on funds withdrawn from the account of the company since I'm not a signatory to his account. I am not associated with the company in any way whatsoever. Mr. Speaker, the motion dated 26 September 2024 claims that I am reasonably suspected to be the principal beneficiary of the dubious transactions. However, Mr. Speaker, no evidence has been adduced or annexed to the motion to give credits to the allegations or suspicion. I categorically refute acquiring or benefiting from any funds paid to Lusona Events Limited and therefore the allegation is false and unfounded. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of siphoning money through St. Nicholas Rehabilitation and Industrial Training Institute Limited. My response, Mr. Speaker, is that the motion dated 26 September 2024 makes the claim that a payment of 21 million was made to a company called St. Nicholas Rehabilitation Center and Psychiatric Hospital. Then subsequent payment was made to Umalari Motors Limited. The motion claims that it is suspected that the entire transaction was used by me to save on public funds and the payments typify money laundering transaction. I am not a director or a shareholder of this company and I have never received any payments from this company. Similarly, I am not affiliated or related to the shareholders and directors of the two companies. No evidence has been annexed to the motion showing that I was a beneficiary of the funds paid as alleged. I wish to point out that I'm not the accounting officer in the office of the deputy president, and I'm not aware that the payments made to this company by the office. The allegation is therefore false and unfounded. Mr. Speaker, there is an accusation of alleged sensational but false, but false accusations against the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor. My response, Mr. Speaker, it is alleged in the special notice motion of ground, on ground four on page 14 and a gross violation of the Constitution that I publicly attacked the Honorable Lady Justice Esther Minor and forcefully threatened to bring action against her. First Article 160, sub Article 5 of the Constitution provides that the judge cannot be found liable in a court of law for actions taken in good faith in lawful performance of their work. This provision is not a bar on freedom of expression guaranteed at Article 33 of the Constitution nor a bar of the right to seek redress for legal wrongs 
simply because a wrong is committed by a judge. The exit multiple legal fora in which to take action against a judge for any actions that are not lawful. My statements were protected speech consequent to a decision by the learned judge in a matter involving my personal assets, which I disagreed with and found to be wholly unfair. The matter having been concluded at that stage, my criticism of the decision was not subjudiced, nor in any manner prohibited by law. While I respected the ruling of the learned judge, I was in absolute disagreement with it. Contrary to the assertions in the special motion, I did not falsely threaten to bring action against the learned judge. I took actual legal action available to every citizen of Kenya under Article 160B, subsection 2 of the Constitution, which allows any person to petition the Judicial Service Commission for removal of any judge and filed a legal complaint before the Judicial Service Commission, JSC, in March 2024. The complaint being live before JSC, discussion of the conduct of the learned judge in the said manner, here would be sub -judice. A copy of the complaint is annexed herewith and marked an extra RG24. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of diverting materials meant for construction of Kilifi Malidi Highway to Tamaka Private Road to Vipingo Beach Resort. My response, Mr. Speaker, I reiterate that Vipingo Beach Resort is registered in the name of the estate of my late brother, Horrible James Gashagua. Number two, the facts are as follows. King Charles III visited Kenya between 30th October 2023 and 30th November 2024. During his state visit, one of the designated places where King Charles III was to visit was Kuruitu Marine Conservancy, which shares a road with the Vipingo Beach Resort. I have annexed a copy of the program for the state visit to Kenya by King Charles III, marked as Annex RG25, which at page 13 on item 63 and 64 shows his departure and arrival at Kuruitu Marine Conservancy. There are several media reports confirming the visit by King Charles III to Kuruitu Marine Conservancy. I have annexed extracts of the media reports by the Star newspaper dated 7 November and by African News marked as an extra RG26. My understanding is that the road to Kuruitu Marine Conservancy was upgraded in respect of this visit, which also to benefit the local community, including amenities like Sheriani Secondary School, Sheriani Primary School, a mosque and a public market as part of the corporate social responsibility. I wish to point out that the alleged road that is Takaungu Sheriani Vipingo is a public road and not a private road leading to any property associated with the deputy president, but a public road. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of undermining the president and the cabinet by allegedly making contradictory public statements from the position taken by cabinet regarding the evacuation of the people residing along the Nairobi River. My response, Mr. Speaker, is that Article 147 of the Constitution provides that the deputy president shall be the principal assistant of the president and shall deputize the president in the execution of the president's functions. Article 20, 28, which states that every person has inherent dignity and the right to have the dignity respected and protected. Article 29C, Mr. Speaker, states that every person has the right to freedom and security of the person, which includes the right not to be subjected to any form of violence from either public or private sources. Section 15G1 of the Land Act states that notwithstanding any provisions to the contrary in this act or in any other written law, all evictions shall be carried out in a strict accordance with the following procedures. Be preceded by proper identification of this taking part in the eviction or demolitions. B, be preceded by the presentation of formal authorizations for action. C, where groups of people are involved, government officials or their representatives be present during an eviction. D, be carried out in a manner that respects the dignity right to life and security of those affected. E, include special measures to ensure effective protection to groups of people who are vulnerable, such as women, children, the elderly, and persons with disabilities, including special messages, measures to ensure that there is no arbitrary deprivation of property 
all possessions as a result of the eviction. This includes mechanisms to protect property and possessions left behind involuntarily from destruction, to respect the principles of necessity and proportionality during the use of force and give the affected persons the first priority to demolish and savage their property. Critically, our constitution provides at, at 147.2 that first the deputy president shall perform the functions conferred by this constitution and any other functions assigned by the president. Pursuant to Article 3 of the Constitution, I, as well as every other citizen of Kenya and state or public officers, have an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend this Constitution in performing any of my functions. This, the national values and principles of governance contained in Article 10 of the Constitution by those state organs, public officers, and all persons, including myself as Deputy President, wherever we make an, or implement public policy decisions. In addition to this matter, Mr. Speaker, these national values and procedures include the rule of law, democracy and participation of the people, human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, equality, human rights, non-discrimination, and protection of the marginalized. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we, as state officers, are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced eviction that will be contrary to our constitution and international law. While campaigning with, pres with President William Ruto, and subsequently when I was sworn in as Deputy President, the President and I promised as a key pillar of the Kenya Kwanzaa government that there will be no forced or unlawful evictions and that all evictions will be human and entail legal composition. Mr. Speaker, the Office of the Deputy President has undertaken extensive engagement with all parties in regard to cabinet decisions on eviction, which I fully support, including the Nairobi River, which is an entity under the Office of the Deputy President and the County Government of Nairobi. Adherence to these principles become extremely important when we, as state officers, are contemplating legal evacuation of citizens with a duty to avoid inhuman forced evictions that will be contrary to our Constitution and international law. Guideline number six of the United Nations General Assembly guidelines for the implementation of the rights to adequate housing prohibits forced evictions and that the state should ensure that any eviction under domestic law are fully compliant with international law. The guidelines further require meaningful engagement with communities to ensure that the right of residents are implemented cooperatively without the need for eviction procedures of police enforcement. Mr. Speaker, I have supported the implement implementation of common directives on the eviction, save for the fact that on being informed that the persons residing along Nairobi River would be evicted and paid 10,000 shillings only, which I and many other Kenyans felt was inadequate compensation for eviction. I insisted that the government should abide by the constitutional dictates and international norms while implementing any cabinet decisions, including eviction, and maintain the dignity of the citizens of Kenyans facing eviction. My statements did not and cannot be construed to undermine the president by insisting that people should not be evicted inhumanly and without adequate compensation. Mr. Speaker, I have been accused of undermining devolution by allegedly holding a meeting in Nairobi Wakulima Market. The motion alleges that on 28th September 2024, I unlawfully interfered with the running of the Nairobi City County Government by holding a public rally where I allegedly incited citizens against lawful directives of the County Government on planning and location of markets. My response, Mr. Speaker, is that the motion alleges that on 20th September 2024, I unlawfully interfered with the running of the Nairobi City County Government by allegedly inciting citizens against lawful directives. Article 6.2 of the Constitution provides that the government at national and county levels are distinct and interdependent and shall conduct their mutual decisions on the basis of consultation and cooperation. This being the case, it cannot be said that there is a violation of the Constitution when someone from the national government makes a comment on matters relating to county governments. The traders had sought me out to intervene and request the governor on their behalf to dialogue with them and seek a solution to the grievances with regard to the relocation 
of markets. I request that a video, a next RG video three, be played for the benefit of members to say what I said. Please play the video for us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My counsel has just drawn my attention that in my earlier explanation on Nairobi River, I have a video one and two that I would like you to play so that I address my point on what I meant. Please, the technical people. Video one and two. Ian Otino lost his life in Madare 
Moments after President William Ruto left the area where he has been assessing the effects of floods, bulldozers descended on homes near riverbanks, flattening structures marked for demolition. <laughs> Wendy Makinda, Ian's mother, struggled to comprehend the loss of her son, a candidate in this year's KCSE. <laughs> Reports indicate that Ian Otieno was trying to salvage church properties when the bulldozer brought down the wall, leading to his sudden demise. His death led to demonstrations by residents, prompting police intervention. The law enforcers allowed the tear gas canisters to disperse the rioting residents. Residents insist they will comply with government orders to vacate houses along riparian lands only if provided with alternative housing solutions. Saturday's demolition team Mukuru Kwaruben claimed two lives and injured three others, sparking outrage among residents who blamed the government for forcible evictions despite many not yet being relocated. Last week, the government mandated the evacuation of all residents from risky areas within 48 hours, including those near dams, those in areas prone to mudslides, and Kenyans residing on riparian lands. Ben Kiwi, Citizen TV, Nairobi. Hakuna tena mambo ya evictions katika Nairobi. Kama kutakuwa na maneno, ni maneno ya relocation ambaye itakuwa ni kwa utaratibu bila ya mwananchi kuvunjiwa nyumba. Uwezi kutoka nyumbani alafu narudi jioni unakuta masufuria barabarani na blanketi zijui imekawa. That one will not happen again. We want to make sure that we are an orderly, humane society that respects the right of everybody irrespective of who they are or irrespective of their financial status. We are all equal before the Constitution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That was President William Ruto talking the same language as his deputy, that brutal and forceful evictions have no place under this administration. We have seen a video of brutal eviction. We have seen young children crying in tears. The deputy president is being accused of undermining his boss by just doing what his boss said, that we should never forcefully, brutally evict the people of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, the leadership of Nairobi Business Traders approached me sometime in March 2024 at the official residence to discuss multiple issues affecting business and requested engagement in the solution and intervention on these issues. Consequent to this meeting, I directed that short, medium, and long-term strategies be undertaken, coordinated by the Office of the Deputy President, to address the issues raised that cut across various agencies, including KRA, Kenya Post Authority, Outer County Authority, Kenya Bureau of Standards, National Police Service, and the Kenya Corporate Board. On 11th April 2024, the Small Traders and Government Agencies Technical Committee coordinated by my office held a meeting to discuss issues raised by the small traders, including Muthurwa Market, attended by the Office of the Deputy <coughs> President Staff, in a supportive role in keeping with the draft framework of cooperation and engagement between the government, the Nairobi City County government, and Nairobi business traders. Subsequent, this, Mr. Speaker, is clear that my office has been having meetings with the governor of Nairobi on various matters affecting the people of Nairobi, and hence, the deputy president cannot be accused of undermining devolution. Mr. Speaker, uh, I have been accused of undermining devolution 
by allegedly holding meetings to fight alcohol. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. If the house took it that I say the house is a theater of the absurd. I was talking about this specific charge of undermining devolution by holding meetings to fight alcohol to be discussed in this house. That to me is what I thought that moment, if it's five minutes or 10 minutes, that would be the theater of the absurd. I did not attribute in any way by trying to demean this house that I sat for five years by calling it the theater of the absurd. But this particular charge, Mr. Speaker, drug and alcohol problem in Kenya has been on the increase and many of our youth have become addicted to alcohol and their lives destroyed because it causes them to drop out of school and start engaging in petty crime to look for money to buy alcohol. I'm a strong advocate for youth rehabilitation from alcohol and substance abuse, which I continue to encourage and support in order to save our future. With regard to alcohol control and regulation, I wish to state that I've held several meetings with the governors in Meru Chuka, in Mombasa, in Nakuru, in Nyeri, and the efforts that President William Ruto asked me to lead in eradication of illicit brew has been very successful and we have been working with the governors and county assemblies who have been developing legislation on the control of licensing of alcoholic drinks. If there is one program that has had the best working relationship between county governments and the national government, it is this particular program. I'm a bit emotive about illicit alcohol because I lost my brothers, one who was a medical doctor to alcohol, another who was a farmer to alcohol. I take it passionately. I don't know who complained about this particular charge. I have not seen any evidence of any complaint and I've not had any person in Kenya complaining that the deputy president is undermining by, with the devolution by leading the war on illicit bruise and drug abuse. Whatever this house decides tonight and the other subsequent house, whatever happens to the Gashagwa, whether he's in or out of office, this war must continue and must be won for the sake of our children. <clears throat> I want us to watch video number four, RG4.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very clear that the meeting had all governors, members of parliament who are present here today, policemen, everybody, and we are in agreement that the war must be won. It cannot, but the deputy president should be impeached for leading the war on alcohol. Sensational statements against the National Intelligence Service, its director general, and officers. Mr. Speaker, during the assumption of office, I took an oath of allegiance in the following terms. Oath or solemn affirmation of allegiance to the President, Deputy President. In full realization of the high calling, I assume as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, I do swear solemnly affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Kenya, that I will obey, preserve, protect, and defend this Constitution of Kenya, as by law established, and no other laws of the Republic, that I will protect and uphold the sovereignty, integrity, and the dignity of the Kenyan people. So help me God. That is the oath that I took in Kasarani. Article 239, Article 3 of the Constitution provides that in performing their functions and accessing their powers, the national security organs and every member of the national security organ shall not act in a partisan manner, further in the interest of a political party or cause, or prejudice a political interest or political cause that is legitimate under this Constitution. Article 239, sub Article 5 of the Constitution provides the national security organs are subordinate to civilian authority. In addition to this allegation, I wish to state that the National Intelligence Service holds a very critical role in ensuring the safety and security of our country. They are responsible for gathering intelligence and share it with all our law enforcement agencies to ensure that the country is safe at all times. Consequently, when the country was caught flat-footed with regard to the scope and extent of the public's dissatisfaction with the Finance Bill 2024, which degenerated in agency protest, it pointed to the failure of the National Intelligence Service in carrying out its mandate. I am persuaded that the National Intelligence Service ought to have known beforehand that the public was completely opposed to the finance bill and they ought to have briefed the president before the protests began. And this would have caused a change of tact by government regarding the proposed bill and the protests which culminated in the loss of innocent lives and destruction of property could have been avoided. Hence, I expressed my opinion on this in my public media briefing in Mombasa, and my utterances were not any different from what happens in other countries when there is a lapse or failure by the intelligence agencies. The nation has witnessed unfortunate instances of several extrajudicial killings, abductions, and disappearances. I firmly believe that if the National Intelligence Service had acted diligently, these instances would not have been witnessed. Under the Constitution, the government agencies are supposed to be accountable to the Kenyan people, including the National Intelligence Service, and calling them out when in a dedication of duty does not amount to undermining them. I am also aware that the Kenya Kwanzaa government has been at the forefront in calling out officers who do not seem to understand their work. Recently, my boss, the president, publicly complained that there are some PSCs and CSEs who did not seem to understand their role. Please play for me video number five, RG5. On President William Ruto has today described some members of his cabinet as utterly clueless and uninformed about the dockets they occupy. And in a sign of trouble for cabinet secretaries, the state house gates were shut for those who arrived late with both President Ruto and his deputy, Ugadi Gashagwa, giving a sharp tongue lashing to the latecomers. And as Citizen TV's Timothy Green reports, the atmosphere at the State House in Nairobi left little doubt on President Ruto's disappointment with a vast section of his 22 member cabinet. <laughs> morning in Nairobi, but the seats on the state house grounds came out heated, particularly for cabinet secretaries. The cabinet members came here to sign performance contracts, but the oral appraisal of the day spurred anything between trouble and outright doom. If you cannot keep time with your employer, you have basically 
you sneezed yourself. I mean, it's just as simple as that. So, for those who came late, who are members of the executive, I will be expecting a written explanation, and it should not include matters of traffic. Punctuality was at issue, with some cabinet secretaries being locked out of state house for lateness. And from the podium, the president and his senior lieutenants were unforgiving. One of the things we need to learn in our performance contract is to meet the traffic. For the 19 cabinet secretaries present, the atmosphere at State House progressed from bad to worse as President Ruto and his deputy regard the Kashagwa issued a blistering assessment of the performance of the cabinet members. Many of you, the people I speak to, don't even know what is going on in your ministries or departments. You have very scanty information. The moment I know more than you in your ministry, then you must begin to understand that something is very wrong. How do you run a ministry or a department or a state if you have no information? That is the highest level of incompetence. Because of us who came with the president from the political space and who are his friends, and we assisted him to become president. Once he gives us a job, that is the termination of that friendship. The friendship with the president will be based on nothing but performance. From travel habits to basic work ethic and even media appearances, it was a brutal ground zero appraisal for the cabinet. Why do you have to honor every invitation that you are being given to every country? For instance, at times we have tried to hold cabinet committees with can't. Five, six, seven, eight ministers out of the country. Some change clothes at the airport from one country to another. That is the truth. Why can't you regulate yourself? If the president was to travel and honor every invitation, he would be out of this country the whole year. You just have to decide what is useful and other things you can give to our passengers out of the country. So when you hear my deputy saying, find time, travel, but travel and see the people who have hired us, you know, go, go to different parts of Kenya so that you can get feedback from, uh, from, from, from the public. We have done so much as an administration. The information is not out there. Our ministers are quiet. They are called for TV interviews. They don't show up to say what they have done. And then the media have a few days because nobody talks for government. I would rather we spend more time explaining to the people of Kenya what we have done in our respective dockets as opposed to travel. If you have to travel, let's travel up the country to where our are and explain what we are doing. And I remember I called uh, the CS Chedugui. I didn't find him, so I called his peers. And I found her, and I explained to her, I told her, look, the public is not understanding this. Did I call you or not on Sunday? You know, I, I told you this is what the public is saying. Please do more sensitization on Hasler Pan Phase 2. With a very public expression of disappointment in his cabinet, President Ruto has triggered speculation on changes in government as his administration approaches the end of its first year in office. From punctuality to work ethic and general performance, the proverbial axe could well fall somewhere. With the performance contracts expected to foster a culture of high performance in the public service and also ensure that public resources are properly utilized, it is also set to offer a framework for President William Ruto to reward performance and also institute sanctions on non-performers. Chamutai Goin, Citizen TV.
Mr. Speaker, President William Ruto Maibos and I have been calling out senior government officials when they fall short of expectations. The Director General of the National Intelligence Service is no exception. He's not above the law. He's accountable to the people of Kenya for his performance. And I have had an argument that we should not call out those in the security sector. I would like you to play the next video where Honorable members, that was President William Ruto as Deputy President criticizing IG Mutiabai, DCI Kenoti, regarding Ashagwa has learned his job from his boss. That public officers must be caught order when they fell short of expectation. And I never saw anybody bring William Ruto here for impeachment for criticizing the IG or the DCI. This is a very unfair allegation. Mr. Speaker, it is also reported by media that the IMF has already warned about impending unrest during the people's dissatisfaction with the 2023-2024 Many of you will call, Mr. Speaker, after the September 11th terrorist attack in the U.S., the U.S. intelligence agencies were massively criticized, and an inquiry was even opened to investigate why their intelligence agency was not able to detect and thwart the attack. All we are saying is that our national intelligence service is accountable to the people of Kenya for its performance. Mr. Speaker, conniving with cartels in the tea sector to block ATDA from implementing guaranteed minimum return, Mr. Speaker, I am here to see a shred of evidence to that effect, and I have nothing to say. I have seen an allegation that we have not been able to do coffee reforms. Mr. Speaker, out of my work, coordinating coffee reforms, the Cooperative Bill 2023 and the Coffee Bill 2023 is before this House. I request this House, after these impeachment proceedings, to embark on those two bills so that the coffee farmers can realize the full benefit of the coffee reforms that we have initiated. There is another allegation that have taken control of a local cooperative society in Madeira constituency. I don't know the name of that constituency, of that cooperative. It is false. I am here to see any evidence. I have nothing to say because there is nothing to be said. On the issue of shareholding, which I think members are interested in listening to, 
I listened to you this morning, and it was quite emotive. By virtue of provisions of the third schedule of the Political Parties Act, the constituent parties of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition entered into various agreements, which were deposited with the Speaker of the National Assembly and the Speaker of the Senate for purposes of Article 108 of the Constitution of Kenya. The following were members, UDA, ANC, Fort Kenya, PA, Farmers Party, Chama Chakazi, Communist Party, Economic Freedom Party, the Service Party, Tujibebe wa Kenya Party, Umoja, na Maendeleo Party of Kenya, and the Democratic Party of Kenya. In accordance with the provision of Clause 3, Schedule 3, a power sharing agreement and development agenda for the certain regions of Kenya, I attach copies of these agreements, RG32. All those agreements talked about specific regions. The leaders who have paid their signatures can vast issues of appointments to do with specific regions. Power sharing agreement between UDA and ANC and Ford Kenya, for example, say that the UDA would dominate the coalition president, uh, the presidential and deputy presidential candidates that was honored. The president would agree, would guarantee the stature, the dignity, and financial and operational autonomy of the office of the deputy president, which I have been insisting on because it's part of the coalition agreement. The, the ANC would be allocated the position of the prime cabinet secretary, which has happened. Ford Kenya would be allocated the position of the speaker of the National Assembly, and that is why Honorable Masika Wetangula sits here today. In accordance with Article 2 of the Power Sharing Agreement, ANC and Ford Kenya would have a 30% share, share is a word, of the national government positions. This drives my utterances about shareholding. It is embedded in all these agreements that are attached here for you to read. I heard this morning an honorable member saying that the deputy president said the people of Ukabani will not get resources because they did not vote for Kenya Kwanzaa government. That is not true. The deputy president of the Republic of Kenya does not allocate resources. Resources for the development of the Republic of Kenya are appropriated by the National Assembly of Kenya, where I am today. The deputy president will help the president to oversee the implementation of funds allocated and appropriated by the National Assembly. It is therefore not possible that the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya has the capacity to deny any part of Kenya resources because of the way they voted. The decisions on how resources will be allocated for the development of the Republic of Kenya are made here by the Honorable Members. If your area has no development, please don't impeach the Deputy President. Don't accuse him of not giving you resources. You are in this house to make sure that your area where you come from is allocated appropriate resources because that is your job. Uh, I, I, the agreements are attached, therefore I don't want to go into them. Uh, let me say my speeches on the shareholder issue were informed by the Voisade Power Sharing Com Covenants which are founded on law, having been deposited with the Registrar of Political Parties and lessons learned from the well-known disputed 202 NAC Power Sharing Agreement. Further, sharing agreements are a feature of government formation in all democracies in the world that provide for the formation. My pronouncements on the issue properly understood are not only anchored in law, but entirely harmless and incapable of creating of being construed as a basis for ethnic animosity, a danger to national cohesion or a threat to national unity. On the contrary, coalition building has been one of the most important innovations since the disputed 2007 elections in ensuring stability, equitable sharing of political power, national cohesion, and fostering of national unity. Indeed, Kenya Kwanzaa main opponent in 2022 general election as Miola Umoja Coalition One Kenya Coalition Party was a political party consisting of 25 or political parties 
who also executed a power sharing agreement based on shares. I'm also aware that the Jubilee Coalition that executed a 50-50 power sharing agreement between TNA party and URP party for 2013 general election. I have thus not violated section 13.1a and 62 of the National Cohesion Integration, nor has this commission summoned me to explain any of my comments and how it can affect cohesion. However, notwithstanding the state power share agreement, upon election as deputy president, I went out of my way as required by the Constitution of Kenya to serve all Kenyans regardless of their political preferences during the election or ethnic origin. I now produce the following. Video showing some of my speeches all over the country as marked RG video seven. Touch my video during the launch of the Honorable Raila Odinga's quest for EU chairmanship at State House, again as a demonstration of my embracing the broad based government.
country that will present the whole wide world data to be our hands. This is because Africa, or not that, deserves the best. The question of the human rights and the whole wide world data, the EU and Africanism, is well documented. Passion knows no age, knows no limits. In the person of the Emperor of Maria Odinga, he joined the arms of Joe Kenyatta in coming to Puma, in pushing the agenda for Africa. And they are all the same and the same. The lessons of today are that Raila Odinga, Raila Odinga, is a man of great lessons, endurance, and perseverance. Today, we are going to unveil the translation of Raila Odinga from a national leader to an African citizen. And for all of us in leadership, we have learned great lessons of lessons, endurance, and perseverance. Someone may ask, why is the Ghana national who has before issues with the leadership of Raya Abinga? As a truthful man, I have nothing to lose. It's only that we are competing for the same position between you and my boss. My heart is going for a bigger seat in Africa. All of us, from the president, I am the rest of Kenya and Kenya. And the right of our Raya Abinga is a man who listens to the ground, let me go to thank you. Our listeners to the ground are not Kenyans across the political divide, across communities, are in support of your family and we wish you well. And so I call the right and say, let me acknowledge the case of family. Not just in our lives, but in leadership. I think it is a great moment for the right of our own idea. It's appropriate that I acknowledge on behalf of the country the role of our own idea in the house plate. In the life of this great son of this land, our own idea will be saluting as a country for having been a very strong people. In the very difficult times, and in his worst moments, you have always been there for him. We ask families to support their spouses. So, when I have been out to wish you a happy birthday, it is my hope and prayer that your next birthday will be celebrated at Harvest next year. If you invite President William Muto to come and he's not able to come, Mr. President, I'll be very happy for you to send me to present you with that great basket. We never want to see as a country, it's a great moment. And like right our own leader, I have noted with a lot of appreciation. My wife, Pastor Lucas, is a very prayerful man, has been praying for me as a president daily. And I noted from yesterday she was added in her prayer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. President William Ruto has many times appreciated my people issues and has repeatedly pronounced himself. Let me have the video number nine. Uh, 
to us or the PC. Um, uh, there's been quite a lot of debates, and I'm sure you know that uh, around the running mix in this country. Uh, perhaps this is a great time to uh, shed light on why we settled on this gentleman. Mugabe Bashawa is uh, somebody I've known. Mugabe Bashawa is a very passionate leader. Mugabe Bashawa is a people's person. He speaks about the things that I speak about. He speaks about ordinary people. He's concerned about matters to do with farmers. He's concerned about the things that are dear to ordinary people. And the next task between me and the Rigari Bashawa is the people. He believes in bottom up the way I do. And that is why I chose Rigari Bashawa to work with him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In addition and almost in conclusion, I am not the only leader at the national level who has encouraged unity among Kenyans based on shared regional, geographical, and economic and other factors. I have attached several articles. Luya unity is not optional. Moses Wetangula. Ruto puts case for Gemma College in unity. Mijikenda unity in the offing. Masai Linda's in unity talks ahead of next year's general election. I have attached those articles so that you understand that regions uniting does not mean they unite against other regions. They unite for common issues, common values, and to strengthen them to join other regions for national unity. Mr. Speaker, the motion dated 26 September 2024, tabled before the National Assembly, makes the generalized claims that have committed crimes under national laws. Proceeds of crime and anti-money laundering act, penal code, national cohesion and integration act as anti-corruption and economic crimes. It is on the basis of the claim that it is say that the threshold of impeachment has been met. I'm not aware of any active investigations by any state agency for offenses under the state laws, neither have I been called upon to record any statement pertaining to any investigation. Just like any other Kenyan, the Constitution accords me the presumption of innocence in relation to criminal offenses until the contrary is proved in a court of law on a specific standard of evidence. Therefore, in the absence of any active investigations by any investigative agency in Kenya, I do not believe that there can be any serious reason to believe that I've committed any offense. Otherwise, that will be an indictment of the intelligence agencies as well as investigative agencies. Therefore, it is inconceivable that the threshold of the impeachment motion as defined in Article 145 of the Constitution can solely be based on the perception of the mover of the motion in the absence of any other evidence. I heard the mover this morning saying that all we need to do is to believe in him. I believe that cannot be the position we need actual evidence against the Deputy President. The net effect of the impeachment of this basis of allegations of criminal offenses, whose evidence has not been tried and tested in court of law or by bodies mandated to investigate, would be to disqualify me from the possibility of holding public office in relation to Article 99.3 without the benefit of due process of law and exhaustion of the systems of appeal as provided in the penal code. Mr. Speaker, I do not wish to respond to the issues I had this morning that are outside the motion. I want to confirm that I have tremendous respect for Kenyan women, and I have never disrespected them. What has happened is that as politicians, there is always propaganda to undermine somebody. I call upon anybody with evidence that I have ever disrespected that person to come out and provide that evidence. I had my very great friend, the Honorable Faith Gitao, say that I disrespect women. Many times I've been to Nyandarwa, I've referred to Honorable Faith Getau 
as Ngatha. Ngatha is a Kikuyu name for a woman of great respect. That I have done countless times is on video. Finally, the Honorable Bogus Sholei, I heard what you said in Eldoret. I heard this morning that you said I should be charged with treason. But my sister, me, I'm a grateful man. I remember, and I'll never forget, during the last administration when I was arrested on fabricated charges for studying with the President William Ruto against the wish of the government at that time, Gladys Boshulay came and sat with me at DCI headquarters, brought me tea, brought me lunch, sat with me, comforted me. At court, she coordinated the collection of 12.5 million shillings as my cash bill. She came to see me in Gigiri for four days and had very kind words for me. Despite what you have said, my sister, I do remember that one good thing that you did for me, and I will love you and cherish you for the rest of my life. Finally, Mr. Speaker, as I wind up, I want to appeal to this Honorable House to consider the allegations against me by the mover of the motion, weight against the attached evidence, weight against my defense and the attachments and the videos that are played in this house. And exercise your mind and exercise your discretion. Search your conscience and decide if regarding Ashagwa is guilty of any of those allegations or is undergoing a political process. If you are so persuaded and you search your conscience without any intimidation or coercion or inducement and you think it's the right thing to do, please go ahead and do so. If you search your conscience and listen to the issues that have been adduced here and you find that there are no grounds to impeach the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Please make the right decision. But as you do so, many members who are in this house remember what President William Ruto as Deputy President went through. And most of us stood with him. Regarding Ashagua underwent four years of persecution. Others were persecuted. But we took a firm stand because we believed we were doing the right thing. <clears throat> his family went, underwent humiliation. His friends underwent humiliation. He was a haunted man. And on Integration Day, he pronounced himself that freedom is here. Again, under the new administration, the same regarding Ashagwa, who underwent humiliation and persecution finds himself in the same space under that administration that he fought for. Try, look, reflect, and apply your conscience and make the right decision. Mr. Speaker of the House, I want to thank you for granting me this opportunity. And my address last night was not in any way meant to disrespect the House. Despite, Mr. Speaker, you having ruled that the matter should not be taken out of the house, it was being discussed in every TV station, in every meeting across Kenya, and Kenyans did not have a chance to also hear my side of the story. So I decided, since the accusations against me were everywhere in the country, the people of Kenya, and more so those who voted for me and President William Ruto, deserved also to hear my side of the story. I have tremendous respect for the National Assembly and your ability and capacity to make the right decision. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy President. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy President. Uh, I'm sure your fears that will not be heard fairly have been uh, allayed. You've been heard in absolute 
silence. We will have a sort of decorum from the house. And members, I salute you for the display of your extreme maturity in giving an opportunity to a subject to a motion uh, in the person of the deputy president to be had. What is it, Rosa? The proceedings are still going on. Who is praying? Yes, uh, senior counsel. These proceedings are still going on. Yes, Mr. Speaker, this is the House of Records, and I had wanted to rise under standing order 65, 67A, and 67B. Two of those points we've already covered, Mr. Speaker. It is important that the record reflects that although the standing order 